Hey everyone, Palumbo here, and I am not a developer, at least not professionally, but I've learned a little bit of knowledge about how to automate parts of my job through code makes my life so much easier. And one of the tools that I rely on most is Google's App Script, which can automate most of the tools inside Google Workspace. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how to automate Google Sheets by writing a few lines of code. And specifically, we're going to cover how to grab the spreadsheet in specific tabs, how to generate some random numbers to work with, how to copy data from one column to another, and how to use logger.log to test our script as we go. So I'm assuming that some of you at least uh, slightly are slightly familiar with how to write code or you've written some code before, but I'm still going to start with some background as to how AppScript works, because by understanding some basic concepts, it's going to make your learning much, much easier as you progress. AppScript is based on JavaScript, and the way JavaScript works is by grabbing an element on a web page by giving it a variable or a name that acts as a handle. And once you have that handle, you can do all sorts of things with it. And we can go look here at the documentation page from Mozilla for the document.getElementById uh, function inside of JavaScript. And document is going to be your web page, and this grabs an element by the ID. And the way that you would use this is you would create a name or a variable, so var element equals document.getElementById, and you specify the ID inside the parentheses. There's a better example down here. So we have some HTML, and we have a p tag with the ID of para. And down here in the JavaScript, there's a function, and it grabs that ID by creating a variable or giving it a name, lm, and that equals document.getElementById in para inside of quotes. And so now, anytime you want to do anything to that particular element on the page, you just refer to it as lm. And down here, they have lm dot style dot color equals new color and the result is you can change the color of the text by clicking on some buttons we're essentially going to be doing the same thing but rather than a web page we're just going to be doing it inside of a spreadsheet so with that let's jump right into it i'm going to open up a new sheet sheets dot new will do that for me and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the app script editor and i'm going to do that by clicking on extensions and then app script and the editor is built right in, so there's no other software to download. It's all inside your browser. And the first time you open up the editor, it's going to give you a pretty generic function to work with. You can certainly change the name of this function to make it more descriptive, what you're trying to do. Uh, you can have multiple functions inside of your editor. Um, but in this case, I think my function is just fine, and we're gonna be going with this one. So the first thing that I need to do and I do this almost universally across all of my projects when I'm working with spreadsheets, is I create some variables that just grab the spreadsheet itself and grab either the current tab or maybe even a specific tab. So I'm gonna do that uh, by creating a variable and rather than var, I'm gonna use let ss for spreadsheet equal and with a capital S, I'm going to start typing out spreadsheet. And you notice the editor has an autocomplete. It tries to guess what you're trying to type into it, and it's very useful. So this is the one that I want. I'm just going to press tab, and it will autocomplete for me. So let ss equal spreadsheet app, get current, or rather get active, and I can arrow down to spreadsheet, get active spreadsheet. Open and close paren, and every line has to end with a semicolon. So this grabs the spreadsheet. Now I wanna grab the current tab, and I'm gonna do that by doing let CS for current sheet equal SS, which is now my spreadsheet, get active sheet, open and close paren, semicolon. So what I've done here is I've grabbed the spreadsheet, and then I've grabbed whatever sheet or tab is active. But let's say you're working on a sheet uh, that has existing tabs and you want to grab one by name. Let's say you have one called raw underscore data. Well, you can do that by going in here and saying let raw data equal spreadsheet get sheet by name. First one that comes up, tab complete. And inside quotes, I'm just going to give it the name of the sheet. So 
ss.getsheet by name, specify raw data. We'll grab this one right here. Okay, so now we have the first variable set up. We need a little, some random data to work with. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna call this one data, give it a header. And I'm gonna use the ran between function here, between one and 10. And I'm just gonna drag this down to row 10. This gives us some numbers to work with. Now, one thing here, just real quick note, I'm clicking on these cells, it's still a function. Anytime you interact with these cells, it can trigger that ran between and it can change the numbers. So every time you run your script, it'll give you different numbers back. Um, that can sometimes be confusing. So what I like to do is here, go in, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it. And then I am going to paste special values only. And now you'll see that I just have numbers in here. All right, so now that we've got some numbers to work with, go back to sheet one. Let's go back to our editor. I need to grab that, those cells, that range of data. Uh, App Script, specifically when working with um, spreadsheets, it refers to ranges. Um, so that's what you're going to be working with rather than elements. So I need to go grab that. And I'm going to do that. So say let data range equal current sheet. And I'm going to use the get range function right here. Now here's where we need to stop. And rather than just go through and show you exactly how I would do this, um, I am literally going to show you how I do this because I don't memorize all of these functions. Fortunately, I don't have to because App Script has some wonderful documentation. So I'm going to just Google App Script Git Range. It's the first one that comes up. And there's a ton of information on this page. So I'm going to use Command F and I'm going to type in Git Range. And if you see here, there are five different versions of Git Range. So which one do we use? Well, let's click on the first one. And this is Git Range that takes two parameters, a row and a column and it returns the range with a top left cell at the given coordinate. So this gives you back pretty much just one cell. We need more than that. We have 10 rows of data. We can go to the next one, and this one says get range, and it takes row, column, and number of rows. And it returns the range with a top left cell at the given coordinates and with the given number of rows. This actually seems like the one that we wanna use. If you look down here at parameters, it tells you exactly um, what is acceptable for all these different parameters. In this case, it's looking for numbers. A quick note about App Script and spreadsheets. Obviously the rows have numbers, but App Script also looks at the columns uh, numerically. So rather than ABC, this is gonna be one, two, three. So we wanna grab row one, column one, down to row 10. So we have get range, and we're gonna do row one, column one, 10 rows down. Now I want to make sure that we are grabbing the right range. And I'm going to do that using this tool called logger.log. And so I started typing out logger with a capital L, tab complete there, go to log. And then I'm going to put in the variable that I just created, data range, and that with a semicolon. Let's go ahead and run our script for the first time and let's see what we actually get back. And the way that we're gonna run our script is first of all, we're gonna save it by clicking on save project. And then we're gonna run it. The first time you run your script, Google, uh, Google App Script is going to verify that you actually have permission to run your script against this spreadsheet. So it's authorization required. Let's review permissions. This is my account and I am going to allow it and it runs and what we get back is simply a range and that kind of makes sense because data range equals cs dot get range we gave it parameters well I want to see the data inside that range I want to make sure that we're grabbing the data and we grab the data using a different function so let's say let data equals data range get values we have to use plural because there's obviously more than one cell there so we're going to grab the data using that we stored it in a variable called data and now i want logger.log to show me what's in that variable so i'm going to 
save my project again. I'm going to run it again. And down here, we see we actually get something different back. It's data, five, four, one, two, et cetera. If we go look back at our spreadsheet, it's data, five, four, one, two, et cetera. So it looks like we were able to actually get the data from that column and get the numbers from that column and store that into a variable called data. Now we need to go do something with that. So let's get rid of logger.log and let's define a target range that we wanna copy this data to. And in this case, I just wanna copy it one column over. So let's give it a name. Let's say let target range equal current sheet get range. And we already know that we can do one row. In this case, it's gonna be column two. And we wanna go 10 rows down in that with a semicolon. And the next thing we need to do is we actually need to put that data inside of that range. So I'm going to say target range because that specifies where I want the data to go. And rather than get values, I'm going to put set values. And inside the parentheses this time, I don't need to use quotes there. I'm gonna say, use the data or the numbers inside my variable data. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run it. Let's go look back and the data was copied over. So really kind of quick and simple using a very clean data set. The next part I'm going to show you is in the real world, you are rarely going to actually be writing code against such small bits of data. So I'm going to show you two other tricks that I often use that are also going to come in handy uh, for your own projects. And the first one is in this case, we know that our range is 10 rows down. A lot of times you're going to be writing some code against tables that are either of different sizes or might have data currently being appended or added to it. So let's say, for example, let's get rid of this row. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's add one more number here. So I'm just going to add a seven to row number 11 and let's run our project again. Well, seven didn't get copied over because we only specify the range as 10 rows down. Um, so if data gets added onto this, it's obviously not going to be copied over. There's actually a really easy way to get around this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another variable called last row. And app script has a very useful uh, function. So I'm going to do CS get last row. And so all this does is it looks at the data in your sheet or the data uh, in the range that you're specifying, and it will actually figure out what the last row is. So let's go ahead and delete this column one more time. And rather than say 10, I'm just going to put in my variable for last row. And I'm also going to do it here, last row. And I'm going to save my project and I'm going to run it again. And this time the seven gets copied over. And if we were to add, say another one, and let's actually just delete this one more time. Let's just say, for example, we're going to do a, run this code against a clean data set, add another number to it, and it gets copied over because it's always looking for that last row. Now, one other example I wanted to show you is oftentimes you're working with a spreadsheet that has multiple columns worth of data or very different values. And you may want to insert copy data in between two columns. So in this case, I'm going to show you how to insert a column. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to go into Google and just show you what I would normally do, which is app script, insert column. Click on the first one here, use my command F to look for insert column. You see here, once again, we have multiple options to use. Let's click the first one and take a look at it. So insert column after, and it takes one parameter, the after position, it inserts a column after the given column position. Well, this actually looks like what we want to use. So it gives an example down here, sheet dot insert column after column one. That actually looks like exactly what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is in between where I grab the data and paste the data, I am going to 
um, do a CS for current sheet, insert column after, and I want it after the first column. Next thing I want to do is I actually want to give it a different header to show that that is copied data. So what I actually want to do is if I'm going to insert a row here. This is going to be my header. Uh, I want to grab this cell and I actually want to change the value in it or set a value, a different value for it. So that cell is going to be row one, column two. And we know because we looked previously at the various ways you can get ranges that I can do let header equal current sheet, get range, row one, column two. So I specify that. And then now that I have that cell specified, I can do header, set value, and I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna call this one copied data in that with a semicolon. So save this one more time. Let's run our script, go and look. And I inserted a new column and I changed the header to show copy data rather than data. So this is a really quick and easy example to introduce you to how you would write app script, how it could be used. Uh, as you saw in the documentation, there is a number of different uh, possibilities, creating charts, uh, actually running um, math against various data sets. Um, really, it's up to you and your imagination how you actually want to do this. But if you are brand new to it, this is a great place to start. I think it shows the fundamentals of how you would grab data, you run some type of function or method against it, um, and you use logger.log to kind of test what you're getting along the way. If this was useful, and I hope it was, I would really appreciate if you can give me a like on this video. And also, if you subscribe, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos uh, to help you be more productive and more efficient uh, when it comes to either your work or personal life through various little um, methods like this, through code, through automation, through a number of tools that I use. So stay tuned, and hopefully there will be a lot more useful information coming. Thank you so much.